expert, Jim Phillips, about our current exhibit inside the Lynn Henley Gallery right here at Vulcan Park Museum. Our current exhibit, Birmingham Bottling, Soft Drinks in the Magic City, presented by Birmingham Coca-Cola Bottling Company, is currently on display and we're open Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Stay tuned for the rest of this awesome chat. Yeah, so I'm super excited to sit down and chat with Mr. Jim Phillips. He's one of the many experts who've had input into this current exhibit that we're sitting in right here at Vulcan Park Museum. How are you doing, AJ? I'm fine. You're excited because you don't know I'm a grumpy old man yet, <laughs> but you're going to find out and you won't be so excited. I've heard so but many let's great have at things. It, yes, yes, I've heard so many great things. So <laughs> oh, let's start at the beginning. What is bottle collecting? And, and tell me what drew you to this field? How did you get started? Well, I, I met with tech and I started met with tech and, and when I was I, I got like 44, 43 years old, an old man then, I'm really old now, but I started doing that and I've just always been fascinated with finding old things that are historical. And you kind of know the history of certain coins and some can be rare worth money, but I dug up metal artifacts that date back to the 1800s and amazing history, got to research it. Made a little money doing it, but I got to show it to people. It's just fun researching it. And I love old glass. And I'd always wanted to dig bottles, and a friend of mine uh, rented a house in Southside. He said, there's some old bottles under the floor, and they're tearing the house down. Went down there. They're 1920s bottles. Aren't really that old. But the guy tearing the house down said, he says, out North Birmingham, there's this wooded lot, and they dug old bottles out there. And people dug bottles worth a lot of money. I went out there, and nobody had dug for years. Got the third scoop of a shovel, and per pulled out this 1880s medicine bottle, and I was hooked. Man, I was off and running. And people quit digging. They didn't think they could find anything. So I started pulling bottles out and I was addicted. I called a guy who's an acclaimed bottle collector that I knew that night, like 10 at night. And I said, Steve, I went digging bottles. Oh, it's 10 o'clock, I'm sorry. He said, oh, my, Jim, I love it. You got the fever. I said, I got it. I got the fever. Because there are different colors of glass. There's different stories in them. You can dig them. Drugs, uh, drug companies that made medicines in Birmingham, they're all toxic, by the way. Opium, cocaine, morphine. All the old sodas, which is what y'all are into now with these displays. Birmingham's probably, in my opinion, other people agree, has got the richest heritage in American soft drinks than any town in America. As much, if not more, history for Coca-Cola was made right here as it was in Atlanta, Georgia, where it started, really. And also, but I started digging the bottles, different colors, different shapes, and you're just addicted. And you start learning the history. And when you start learning the history, you start learning what's rare and what's worse than money. When you're a poor man like me, that kind of raises an eyebrow. And so how long did you say you've been doing this? I, when did I start digging the bottles? Probably about 2003. Okay, yeah. okay. And I was digging as an older man then in the heat of the summer. I can't dig in the summer anymore. It's just at this age, it gets too hot. But uh, but uh, we have a guy, I'm going to pay tribute to some people who've done a lot of research in Birmingham. A fellow named uh, Dennis Smith has books out on old patent medicine bottles, well, old sodas, really, and one book is called uh, The Cola Wars. I chatted with him oh, yeah, earlier really, this year. Yeah. And his brother James is called but Dennis has done, I've never met Dennis, I spoke to him once on the phone, and he's really, really a scholar. On, on Alabama sodas, particularly Birmingham sodas, but he knows Southern sodas in America. Sodas. Damn, I'm pretty sure I would not get out of the room in 24 hours just listening to the stories that you guys have. Well, I mean, when you study the, the sodas, is they all have different formulas for colas. They have syrup, mm -hmm. and they make their own formulas. And look at what Birmingham's got: Ryola, Ozoola, National Dope Company. Dope is a slang term for soft drink. Mm -hmm. National Dope Company. I, you know, I thought it just meant cold, it means any soft drink. I have elderly people, Some, if it could be older than me, if anybody's older than me, but I've had older fellows say, my grandfather used to tell me, go down the store and give me a dope. And that meant a soft drink, right? Mm -hmm. And soft drink. But then you got celery color, Nervola, uh, Happyola, Ozola, uh, Cola Nip. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes on and on. There's probably 40 different sodas and Birmingham is the home office to like 40 different sodas, soft drinks in Birmingham alone. Mm -hmm. So back to the bottle collecting, where would you look? What, where do you start your research? What makes you drawn to a certain area? Well, you'd look today probably where you get your butt shot off. <laughs> <laughs> the first place I heard about was a wooded lot in North Birmingham, and I went out there and saw these craters in the woods, and there was a chain link fence, and there was a tire business there, and I 
went inside and says, do y'all own that lot back there? And the guy said, yeah, it turned out they didn't own the lot. And he gave me permission to dig. And I'm digging in the remains of old craters where people dug, but they didn't get it all. And I started getting in between some of the craters and I started finding some nice bogs in Clinton Hutchison's. None of the real rare ones, but some beautiful bottles. Now, also, there was a guy doing research, and he found where there was an old dump in Inslee. You know, without permission, he started digging on a creek back down there, and everybody swarmed in and got a bunch of old bottles. Um, one of the oldest dumps was down off where Sloss Furnace is. Now, that's all paved over, but they dug some valuable bottles. Birmingham was founded in 1871, and some of these bottles went back to that era, and even before, because people would keep bottles from the 1850s then throw them away. So there just are no play. Well, right now, there are some young bottle digging clubs, and one guy's doing videos on it, and he's doing uh, YouTubes. They're fascinating. He wades down creeks. That's his forte, his strength, okay. and he explains what he's looking for, and these creeks have erosion, and you can see where there's old dumps, and there's the old bottles are in the, the gravel, the creeks, and the banks. Now, he gets permission to wade in the creeks and all that, but he's pulling out some beautiful bottles and stuff. So, but I'm telling you right now, we get into the Hutchinson bottle talk, there's a fortune underground in Jefferson County. And uh, it, people went out and dug up some places and knew what to look for, they could find some nice things. Okay, okay, you mentioned a shovel. What other equipment? Is there some expensive, expensive equipment? Well, I've got a spot right now. <laughs> I finally got permission to dig behind a place here in, in Birmingham. And the property owners, uh, they had been harassed about people wanting to dig there over the years and got irritated with it. And I got permission and you're going to have to dig down about six feet. I saw people digging with a backhoe or water line and I saw all the old bottles coming out. And the backhoe operator was taking the bottles. I don't know if the property owner knew the value of what he was walking away with. I'm sure he didn't advertise the fact. But anyway, forget the water line. Behind it and beside it, you can dig, but you got to dig six feet deep. And there's liability in there. You got to dig about a 30 foot trench, another 30 foot, six foot deep. Now, how are you going to do that with a shovel? They don't want you to dig with a backhoe. I could pay a little backhoe operator to come in there, but then you got to dig and there's liability. Mm -hmm. There's a little house here and a little house there and children play. Now, if they fall in that ditch, you get sued. So you're going to dig a six foot ditch, 30 feet long, and fill it in at the end of the day. Now, what am I saying? Mm -hmm. I got a little problem here. Mm -hmm. How am I going to pull this off? But therein, where this side is, should be some Coca-Cola Hutchison bottles that are now selling, starting at $5,000 and up each. Yeah. Okay. And those are the Birmingham Coke Hutchison. Then you got Bessemer, Jasper, Aniston, Gaston. Bessemer and Jasper now are probably bring in easily, I would guess since the price has gone up, probably six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 each. And that's dirty dug out of the ground. There's a rare one out there too that's been found under a floor that probably sell for over twenty thousand dollars. Those are the holy grail of American, not to sound sacrilegious, but the holy grail of American soda bottles are Coca-Cola Hutchinsons. Uh, they started out eighteen ninety nine in Chattanooga with block letters. Let me show what a Hutchinson is. I got one right here. This is a Doug one. See, all okay. this is uh, Alabama bottle, very common. Okay. Let's do this Hutchison thing right now, man. Let's see if I can get that wire. I can't get the wire to come through. But there's a wire in there. It's looped. It's kind of like ballooned, bent. And then there's a rubber gasket that would be on the bottom of it. Okay. This one's stuck inside. I probably should try to maneuver the thing out of there before I could do it. They're hard to find these things with the Hutchison gaskets in them. But they shoot the soda in, which is carbonated. And that wire loop will not, this one's fell in there. They're not supposed to fall in it because they're kind of flared out so mm -hmm. they, they, they won't go down through the little hole. So they wobble around in there. When the carbonation comes up, it pushes a little rubber gasket into place and it locks in from all that pressure. Okay. You know when you open a soft drink, <laughs> pressure holds it in place. Now to drink the soft drink, you take your thumb, you push down on that wire loop, pop, hence the name, soda pop. That's where the name comes from. Okay. And then that wire loop won't go in there, so you can drink that soda with that wire loop in your mouth. Okay. And when you're done, it just wobbles around. Now this one fell in because it got bent, but it wobbles around and they shoot steam in it to sterilize it again. Okay. Some Hutchison bottles, I sold one a while back, said Meridian Steam Bobbing Works. Well, what was in it? Well, they put orange flavored drink. They probably had a cola syrup that wasn't uh, patented. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they put grape drink in it. 
probably put ginger ale in it, put all kinds of flavors. So it just says steam bottling works, okay? Okay. Anyway, that's a Hutchison bottle. And when you get one of those, this is the most common, so it's Alabama bottling, Birmingham. Uh, we used to dig these all the time, maybe a $10 bottle. But if you get one and it says, as it started in 1901 in Birmingham, and then Bessemer, Aniston, Gadsden, Jasper, one year, 1901, the R. Hutchison bottles had the script, that's called Spencerian script, that beautiful Coca-Cola. No block letters like Chattanooga did, okay? When you get one of those and it says Coca-Cola, Birmingham, Bessemer, Jasper, you've got yourself a few thousand dollars. Wow. And they're out there now. They're, they're under the backyards of old houses. I know in Bessemer, some old houses, I guarantee you the back underground where they had their private dump, there's some of these bottles. Wow, okay. And of course, this is what the bottle collectors crave. Uh, the big deal is, well, there's all kinds of rare bottles, but the holy grail, like I say, is, is to get those Coke Hutchinson bottles, man, and you got bragging rights, or a lot of money, or both, you know. Wow, and speaking of the evolution of the bottle, so what is a crown cork bottle? Well, a crown cork bottle is, is it's essentially what they've been using up, up until recently. Okay. And they go back quite a few years. The Hutchinsons were replaced by straight sides, and this is a straight side. This bottle is from Tallapoosa, Georgia, from Dixie Bottle. It says Dixie. They were in business 1897 to 1902. It says Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. There's no city on it because they made them to go out to all these different cities. Okay. So it's a $50 bottle, a Georgia bottle collector tells me. But that's a straight side. They have a machine. You've got the cap. Let me show you what they look like back then. I bought you a reproduction of a Coca-Cola bottle. I'm going to show you some other kind of bottles. Too. There's a reproduction. That's what your straight side cups look like. Starting in 1902, when they dropped the Hutchison bottle, they went to straight sides. You've got a machine now. Instead of that wire loop, mm -hmm. you've got a machine where a guy presses a pedal. And the machine comes down and has these caps and you've got cork on the end. It just locks them up. Yes. And that's a corker. That's a crown, crown corker, okay? But they call these straight sides. Now, you know what a Coke bottle looks like to, you know, the traditional mm -hmm. shape? In the 1930s, they called that a Mae West bottle. Y'all don't know who Mae West is, do you? <laughs> Mae West was a shapely, voluptuous actress. <laughs> who used to say to men in her movies, her famous line was, why don't you come up and see sometime? It's okay. a sex symbol. Okay. And she was voluptuous. So the Coca-Cola bottle that you know has that curve, so they call that the May West bottle. Guess where that bottle was introduced first? Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. Coca-Cola wanted a bottle that looked unique. You see how I got other straight sides, other straight sides, and silver color, Lilola, Ozolola. Some of those bottles might be in Hutchinson's, but everybody switched their straight sides, but they all look the same, including Coke. Coke says, let's get something that you can grip and it's unique. So they designed the hobble skirt bottle and they tried it out. I believe it was New Year's Eve, 1915. Okay. They started putting Coca-Cola in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham's the trial market where they experiment. So 1916, Birmingham, Alabama introduces the famous Coca-Cola Hutchison bottle and it caught on like wildfire. They made Coca-Cola started at uh, Atlanta, Georgia in 1896. A man named Pemberton was a, a chemist in a chemical company. He formulated it and sold it as a headache remedy. And then uh, he sold it, and their fellow named Asa Candler had a soda fountain that he rented the space in Jacob's Pharmacy in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Asa Candler bought the rights a couple of years later, and they advertised it, and boy, it did it catch on. People look Coca-Cola. Let me show you a little history there. This was dug in Birmingham. But what's it got on it? It says Atlanta, Jacobs Pharmacy, Atlanta, Georgia. This comes from the exact drugstore where they introduced Coca-Cola. The guy that dug this was digging with me, it was a friend. I couldn't believe him, offered him 250, he wouldn't take it. His mother gave it to me free. She found his body in the morgue. I couldn't get him on the phone and call her and she said, we found his body in the morgue. He was a friend of mine, Bob Digger. I gave her some money, but that's Jacobs Pharmacy. Coca-Cola history right there. But this is what the bottles looked like. This is a uh, reproduction, but they had this diamond shaped, diamond shaped uh, paper label on it. Mm -hmm. And this is Coca Cola, and then they would say Birmingham or Atlanta, Georgia. It's a straight side. Now, and, and 
1908, Coca-Cola started putting Coke in some amber bottles. Okay. And you find these in Kentucky, Alabama, Tennessee. This is Coca-Cola, Knoxville, Tennessee. Some are worth a lot of money. Knoxville is fairly common. It's a forty-dollar bottle. So, what makes the cork, uh, the crown cork bottle? What makes it better than the Hutchinson bottle? Because you've got full pressure sterilization. Okay. The Hutchinson bottles can leak. Uh -huh. Now, if you like drinking your soda with a wire in your mouth. <laughs> Or stick with the Hutchinson bottle, right? So it didn't affect the taste. Each is old, you know. I mean, there's some kinky people out there. They're not telling you what they think out there, but you know, if you do, I, I admire that. As long as the taste didn't get affected, I, I think that that's a, that's a good um, evolution. Okay. But, so but anyway, the Hutchinson bottles phased out. They quit manufacturing them in 1912. Okay. National uh, Dope Company. I mean, that's a 1908 company, 1908 to 1911. Okay. And they were in Hutchison bottles. Let me show you some other shapes. Are you interested in that? Sure, absolutely. Uh, bottle collecting, you see the bottle diggers, man, they're all addicted to sodas and God bless them and all these boys were rich and some of them were finding some of the more rare sodas that I never found. But uh, I love some stuff that they really don't care about. I dug this up and called an old fella that collects bottles. It's actually Steve. I was a little ignorant back then. I said, Steve, I dug, I think, a perfume bottle. You know, like wine bottles. You lay them on the side and the cork's in the side. The cork stays wet. Mm -hmm. So it's swollen. It won't leak. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what this is. This bottle's going to lay on the side. Well, what is that? Well, I thought, is that supposed to be like a carrot? Steve said, come on, Jim, use your head. It's a cigar. <laughs> okay. It's a cigar flask. Now, whiskey was sold as a medicine back in the old days. Okay. But you might not want to go to church. Oh, Duffy's Malt Whiskey, used to, they used to run ads in the papers where preachers would praise Duffy's Malt Whiskey as a great gift from God. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and, oh, yeah, they got, the, I, I could show you ads we can here now. The guy's 115 years old, and his wife says he's got the vitality of a 40-year-old man thanks to Duffy's Malt Whiskey. Pastor Henderson is 88 with energy and vitality, and he praises Duffy's Malt Whiskey. That's the wow. salvation. <laughs> they paid people. They also paid people, bankers, senators, um, mayors, police chiefs, ministers to endorse patent medicines that had cocaine, opium, and morphine in them mm -hmm. because the stuff made you feel good. And I tell people, socialites from far off in Wyoming, Mrs. Coyne claims that Peruna saved her, saved her life. Mm -hmm. She's a socialite. Well, that may very well have an opiate in it, a drug which made her feel better. But if she is a successful lady putting on charity balls in that town, if you're a successful mayor or a lawyer or governor, you ain't taking that stuff. Because if you are, you're a dope addict. But you get your picture in the paper. So you get publicity and you get paid to get your picture put in the paper. So that's how that game worked. Let's say I come off down here and Amanda says to me, now Jim, we know you like your whiskey, but don't be bringing your whiskey down here in Vulcan Park. But you can smoke those cigars, and it's winter, so I got my corduroy coat, and I put whiskey in this. Now look what color it is. Mm -hmm. And you see two amber, brown, big, rich man cigars in my pocket. So I say, listen, I got to break off in this interview. You got to go to the restaurant, and I go in there. Mm -hmm. That's how you bring your whiskey in the church. Smart. Yeah, disguise it. Mm -hmm. Don't let people see it empty, but you can disguise it as a cigar. Mm -hmm. uh, patent medicines. UAB hired me to speak at the brown bag, a brown bag luncheon for doctors on the old patent medicines from the 1880s up to like 1910 uh, that were common in Birmingham. And they had cocaine, opium, and morphine. Mrs. Winslow's, I dug this in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup for teething babies. It's 20% morphine. Oh, wow. This stuff killed babies by the hundreds, caused brain damage, drug addiction. Moms would take it to lay themselves out with a morphine high sedation. Back then they put all kinds of stuff in there and you got away with it until the Food and Drug Act of 1907 was created. They started coming down on these companies. You can't lie and keep secret what's in those medicines. That's what proprietary means. You don't know what's in it. Mm -hmm. They got rid of that. So this is stuff that killed babies left and right and uh, caused brain damage. And uh, it's a, 
I mean, I've only done one, but it's pretty common bottles, like $20. And what are bottles worth? Whatever anybody's willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. That's the road. Wow. So. Wow, you are awesome. I hope you guys have enjoyed my chat with Jim Phillips. Be sure to come back in two weeks, and I'll be chatting with Peyton Lee, the great-granddaughter of Buffalo Rock founder, Sid yes. Lee.